How's it going, everyone? Maryland here, even though I look kind of like a Carablast or something. Yeah, that's right. I'm back on the Hermitcraft server, and I upgraded my armor. I went ahead and made a full set of nano armor, and, uh, well, I enchanted it with some pretty good enchants. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's see. I did a whole bunch of stuff based off of the things I did last time, such as that. Super awesome boiler. Let's go down and take a look at it. Now, I did a little bit of readjusting because this thing, that whole power converter thing, it was just this big honking monstrosity here. And I think I had the ME cables over there. And it's like, ah, you know what? I'll just hide it all underground. So the ME stuff is actually feeding this underground right now. Um, and I have cables wired all over here. So I'll be able to set up more. And I don't know where that zombie is. Darn thing. But yeah, so this is working like a charm. I've got this thing just... It's only using probably about eh, one-tenth or so of its actual capacity, which is just excellent. Oh, man, I love that thing. I love that thing. Um, so did a whole bunch of tidying up around here. All my barrels are gone. Just they're obsolete now thanks to this thing. Kind of game-breaking, but whatever. Whatever. I find it very convenient. Now, if you look in here, yeah, did a lot of tidying up as well. Um, put some MFEs in the wall here. And there's a good reason for that. Because we need to have some dedicated power for some of the machines we're going to build. Yeah, that's right. We're going to work on the industrial blast furnace. That's why I took down the old blast furnace, because you know what? And the coke oven, because really those things just aren't, they're not cutting it anymore. Uh, I have an MFE here, so we can do some other fun stuff. Got my MFSU in the wall here, because it just seemed like a better location for it than in the basement. And then it's plugged into an MV transformer. So, remember all that stuff I was telling you about voltages and things in earlier episodes? Well, now we really have a good example of this. Okay, so this MFSU, it outputs at 512 EU per tick. So that's pretty good. That's called high voltage. Each packet is 512. Um, very cool. That's what is being generated downstairs in the basement. It's being sent through those glass fiber cables and then up to here. If I were to plug any of these machines in directly to that, they would blow up, and it'd be a big mess. So I have to plug it into this MV transformer, which will transform this into medium voltage. The side with the three dots on it, that, you know, makes sure that it is accepting the higher voltage, so in this case, high voltage. Even though it says MV transformer, it accepts the next highest up, because it's transforming it to medium voltage. And then, in the back, it is outputting it, See right here, and these all are medium voltage, or 120 ADU per tick. So this induction furnace, which is something I made sort of off camera, I apologize, but I really needed to do that, and we're going to be making one today anyway, so I'll show you. But that uses medium voltage, and then all this stuff out here uses low voltage. So I use this LV transformer, again, plugging it into the side with the three dots, and then the one dots, they will output low voltage packets and stuff. So yeah, that's kind of how that all works. I have a whole ton of ME stuff set up here. So what on earth is this thing, this induction furnace? Well, if we take a look, remember last episode I had about 26 or 30,000 some odd birch logs? Well, after the furnace heated up, or the, the boiler thing down in the basement, I found that it just... It wasn't quite keeping pace with that lone powered furnace converting everything into charcoal out in the tree farm. It just wasn't quite doing it. So I decided I'm just going to use this induction furnace in order to turn all of the logs into charcoal, except for 3,000. I use one of those limiter things to do that, and that's pretty handy. So the induction furnace makes it super handy to do this because if you are smelting a lot of items at a time, this heat builds up, and then this thing just goes to town. It cooks so fast. Uh, let's actually show an example of this. We can do a little trick here. I'm going to set this to 
let's keep only 2,000 logs instead. So now this level emitter will keep telling the export bus to put logs in here. And as you can see, the speed keeps increasing as long as it is burning things. So if you have something that you're burning constantly, or if you have a lot of stuff you need to process, this induction furnace is awesome at that. It can also process up to two things at a time. You can already see the speed picking up substantially. Just imagine what happens when it gets to 100%. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set it back to 3,000, just so I have some wood to build with. I'm getting kind of sick of the birch wood, though, so I might change it around. But it's working for fuel right now. Okay, I probably, again, because I do this every episode, right? <laughs> I've yapped on long enough. But that's just because I want to show you the things I've been working on that doesn't usually require new technology. That's been kind of fun. It's like I build stuff, kind of show you an overview, and then I play around using, using just that technology. So it's neat. So here's what's on the menu today. We're going to build an industrial electrolyzer, an industrial blast furnace. Ooh, that's going to be really cool. A lot of you have been saying, build that quarry, build that quarry. Well, this is really the last step we need before we can build that quarry. And we're going to need the standard machine casing stuff in order to build that because we need some machine casing and we need this blast furnace to make the titanium used in the drill. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with that. What do you say? Well, first things first, this is an industrial electrolyzer. Okay, so pretty simple. We've already made all the things here except for this boring old electrolyzer. And that's just a machine block electronic circuit, two copper cables, and some empty cells. Nothing too bad. Other than that, it's an extractor, magnetizer, four refined iron plates, two advanced circuits, and all that other stuff. And that makes this industrial electrolyzer. So this accepts up to 128 EU per tick in. And what this does, let's actually set it down over here. Do I have, oh, I put away my cables. But I've got this nice thing in the wall. And I am so happy. I hear it's raining outside. It just started, which is pretty great. We could use some rain. Uh, it's been a little dry lately. Okay, so let's hook this up here. Don't want to hook this up to the MFSU, quite obviously. And we'll just put this here for now. Actually, that looks kind of silly. Oh, I did make another thing in my inventory here. Just an electric tree tap. Three steel electronic circuit and a battery. It's just a tree tap, except you charge it with EU, so it doesn't break. Super convenient. All right, let's put that there just because it looks a little nicer. Okay, industrial electrolyzer. What on earth is this, huh? Well, this thing has a ton of recipes. For one, it uses a lot of these empty cells. It basically takes something and then puts its byproduct into cells. So... There are several relevant recipes here. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Make bone meal into calcium. Uh, sugar. I can get carbon out of that. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay, so this is one of the more useful ones. With 16 sand and two empty cells, you'll get a compressed air cell and then the silicon cell. This is really important because with that and the blast furnace, that's how you can make solar panels. You need those in order to do it. You can also do that with clay dust. Although clay tends to be a little trickier to get a hold of. That can make some handy things, though. Two silicon cells, two alum uh, aluminum. Okay, so this is an interesting thing. I know a lot of uh, you Brits out there have been saying, oh, you're saying aluminum wrong. It's aluminum. And it's actually a U.S. thing. You see, in the U.S., it is aluminum, and that's just how you say it. And you spell it without the second I. However, I know internationally it's more aluminum, and that's fine. So there's the two different types in here. I'm going to treat them both as separate things. So I'll say aluminum here, even though, you know, those of us in the U.S. are probably like, wait, isn't that aluminum? Uh, yeah, but I'm just pronouncing them and treating them as two separate things. Okay, so yeah, that's a useful recipe. Um, what's another one? We need titanium. That's one of the things we need here. And... See, you get all these different cells. You can do a lot of stuff with that. Uh, Ender pearl dust. Oh, you can make some, a lot of cells with that. Lazarite. Jeez, look at all this stuff. I mean, it's just kind of crazy. Some of these nether dusts you can transform into, like, iron or sulfur, which is pretty handy. Calcite. Interesting. Um, where's the one I'm looking for? Where is it? 
Cinnabar. Oh, that's a good way to get Mercury. Here we go, that Bauxite. So, Bauxite has not had much of a use up until now with the Industrial Electrolyzer, which you get a ton of aluminium. You get two tiny piles of titanium, so basically half a titanium out of 12 Bauxite. So that's kind of unfortunate. And then you get a bunch of hydrogen and compressed air cells. Now, it costs you eight empty cells. So that's about eight, ten. That's no big deal. So that's the one we want. Another really handy one is ruby dust. Nine ruby dust will get you one chrome dust. And this is important later on. It actually gets you the aluminum as well. Uh, but that's another rather important one. Um, okay, you know what? I think that's all we need to really see. Let's try this out. We need some bauxite. So, I should have some bauxite in here. I don't know if I even bothered to... Yeah, I haven't even ground any of it yet. Let's take 64. And let's really quick see how much we get through the different methods. Okay, so we can pulverize it for 4 and a 10% chance, chance of aluminium. Industrial grinder. Yeah, so it looks like we can just put it in pulverizer or macerator. Um, I'll put it in the pulverizer just because I wouldn't mind getting some aluminium. Um, yeah, so actually, you know what? I might as well get all of it. The industrial grinder, we're not too far off from that. I could probably build it this episode if there's time. Um, but since it doesn't give an extra benefit in this case, I'm just going to put it in this pulverizer. Okay, I also have an ender chest here, so it'll all just go right into my ME system, which is pretty nice. Um, let's go ahead and make some cells. So, there we go. Uh, let's go ahead and make a few of these. Cool. Okay, let's try this bad boy out. So you put the cells right here, and then you put whatever thing you're trying to electrolyze right here. Sometimes I think you might need water, and I guess you put that there, or hook it up there, or something. Um, so let's actually, let's try this on some sand. Get some silicon. So, put that there, and it'll do its thing. Albeit kind of slowly. <laughs> Uh, how's that bauxite doing? Do, do, do. Wait, where's... Why isn't that working? Oh, that's right. It's going into the powered furnace, darn it. So you know what? I'm going to temporarily... Um, let's temporarily put... Oh, let's see. We'll have orange. And we'll shut that one off. So everything's just going in here now. Should be, should be, hopefully. I don't see anything moving there. But it's not accumulating there, so I guess we're good. Okay, so, oh, we're almost done, almost done. Look at that. There we go, we got a silicon cell. Nice. Now, I'm going to take this out really quick, because this is the stuff I really want. Although it looks like it's still in the process of doing its thing. Oh, well. Okay, so, yeah, what do we do with this? Let's just take a look. Um, yeah, we put that in the industrial blast furnace to get a silicon plate. Actually, it takes two silicon cells for that. And then with the silicon plate, you use that and some glass panes. Actually, two of the plates, so four silicon cells. A carbon plate, a generator, and two electronic circuits gets you a solar panel. Very basic solar panel, which generates an astounding one EU per tick in the daytime but it's free energy after the part where you built it so you know i don't know i'm probably going to try to avoid using a lot of solar power besides i got boilers i got all that fun stuff okay let me clear all that out and let this thing do its thing okay so while that's going on let's go ahead and make something fun what do you say let's make the industrial blast furnace so we need two of these induction furnaces, which are just an electric furnace, an advanced machine block, and some copper. So I went ahead and made those. You need another advanced machine block, two electronic circuits, and then these copper nickel heating coils. You actually need four of them. I went ahead and built three, just so I could show you the last step in this. So on a rolling machine, just take four nickel in the corner and then four copper on the, the edges, and you'll get three 
Copper nickel heating coils. Cool. Alright, nice. So, let's go ahead and build this thing. Now, it's a multi-block structure, which is uh, kind of unfortunate because the blocks are expensive. But I went ahead and got everything all set up. You need 34 of these standard machine casings. And you can upgrade the casings to increase the temperature capacity. You can also use these lava buckets to do so. And other heating coils. You can put those in. But we're just going to start with the basics right now. Let's go ahead and put in uh, the standard machine casing. So again, refined iron plates, a whole ton of them, machine blocks, and a ton of circuits. You're going to need a set of nine of these to start out, and that'll get you 36. You'll only need 34 of those because two in the middle have to be hollow. But that's no problem. You're probably also going to want to make sure it has a dedicated MFE because it's going to require a constant 128 EU per tick. Otherwise, it's not going to work, and that's not cool. So I'm going to set this up, and the first layer, it's basically just like a blast furnace. So just leave uh, two hollow spots in the middle, although you don't want them to be totally hollow. What you want to do is, to increase the temperature capacity, put one source block of lava there, and then one source block of lava, whoa, oh, there we go, right there. And then that will actually increase the capacity. Keep that in mind if you ever have to tear it down, though. And there we go. We have the standard machine casing. Ah, I'm going to have to run that wire all the way over here, aren't I? Um, darn. Maybe I should put this down a level. Because then I can have the blast furnace right here. Uh, I don't know. Well, for now, it'll look fine. I might do a little bit of readjusting. But you need to put the blast furnace block itself on one of these spots right here. So basically, if you were to look at this as a plus sign, it has to be on the edges there. You can't put it on a corner or anything. So, I guess I'm going to set it right... Actually, we'll just do here. And that light should turn on, assuming everything is all connected. If you have the structure proper, and if you have... Um, well, actually, the lava in the middle isn't necessary, but you do need to have the structure look like that. And this thing needs to be right here. So, it also says heat capacity 1520K. If you're doing it solely default here, that is what your heat capacity will start out as. That's why the lava in the middle is rather handy. You can upgrade that with some coils. There's like, oh, what is it? Uh, whoops. There's canthal heating coils and then nichrome heating coils. And these take some things that we're going to have to make. Yeah, um, but we'll, we'll get to those, don't worry. Okay, but for right now, let's go ahead and make some titanium. So we have four piles of tiny titanium. We need to put them all together to make one titanium dust. Oh, right. We're going to need to hook this up to some power, aren't we? Well, let's just use this MFE, MFE since it's right here. Um, we'll hook it up to the side. Should have power now. Let's put the titanium dust in, and it will begin cooking. Takes a little bit to cook, but that's okay. That's okay. You can actually hook up multiple industrial blast furnaces to the same casing, and it won't really affect things all that much. So keep that in mind. You don't need to build a separate machine casing structure for each one. It's just you can only have the four then attached to it. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so this thing is still just kind of kind of moving along. We need to give it some more cells, though. That's the only problem is it gets rather expensive with tin. But it's no big deal. So let's make a, a couple of this. Okay, there we go. Now I think we're going to need, what, two titanium in order to make that drill. Because in order to make the quarry, if you're using Greg Tech in the Ultimate Pack 1.12, which is for Minecraft um, 1.47, 
that's the version I'm playing on right now. I know that Unleashed and Unhinged were just announced, as well as the uh, Direwolf 20 pack, which is pretty cool. And we're going to be upgrading to 1.6 on the server. We're not going to go with any of those upgrades for right now. But, yeah, anyway. So, to make this diamond drill, you need two titanium plates and that mining drill. I guess I could have actually made the mining drill. That's all right. I'm fine with my diamond picks, though. But, yeah, so you're going to need steel plates, electronic circuit, and a rechargeable battery to make that. And then, to make the diamond drill, you need those titanium plates. And that drill, and yeah, so, you know. But then everything else is relatively straightforward. Oops, why did I do that? Let's see. Okay, so that's all set. Let me see if... Oh, not, not yet. Not yet. Almost, but not yet. Let me get some more bauxite here. Just keep it all fueled. Ooh, and some aluminium. Now, I don't know if I can cook up the aluminium. Gonna have to find out. Oh, come on! Almost, man! Oh, wow, I can get 2k heat out of this hydrogen. That's kind of neat. There we go. Two tiny piles of titanium. Woohoo! So that'll give us one more titanium dust. Let's put that in there. And, uh, yeah, you know what? I should really get started on that drill. So let's do that really quick. Um, what are we going to need for that? We're going to need five steel plates, a circuit, and a battery. Big deal. Big deal. You know what? Let me go ahead and craft that all really quick, and I will see you in a sec. Okay, so went ahead and made the battery and got everything together. So now we have the mining drill. Cool. So you can actually make that once you get access to the steel plates. I guess I could have made that earlier, but ah oh well. I like my drill just fine. Okay, so anyway, there's one other thing I totally forgot to mention. Look what I found. Oh, iridium ore. I know. So I was doing a bunch of caving the past two nights just because I made this really fun world. It's a mushroom island biome world and a cave world. Bright lighting, so there's no mobs thanks to the thing. I don't need torches. It's just nice. It's relaxing. I love caving just as a relaxing thing. So I got a ton of resources, like diamonds, rubies, tons of redstone by silk touching and then using um, the macerator thing. And, yeah, it's all processed thanks to that, uh, what do you call it, the induction smelter, which is cool. So... While I was just searching, I found the super duper duper rare, let me make sure I have my silk touch, Iridium Ore. So this thing looks a lot like Galena Ore from a distance. But in fact, it doesn't really look all that special, but man, this thing is, it's so hard to find. One ore generates every five chunks. That's a 16 by 16 radius, so they're super rare. And it could be anywhere. It's not like it's at a certain level, so they're really hard to find. Um, if you happen to find one, though, try to silk touch it, because that way you'll be able to do much better stuff to it. If it's silk touched, you can actually just go in and, well, you could pulverize it from the get-go to get two iridium ore and a platinum dust, which is pretty nice. You could macerate it, but no chance of platinum. Or you could use this industrial grinder to get two iridium and uh, basically half a platinum dust. Or a full platinum dust if you use a mercury cell. So definitely very good to have. I'm just so happy to have one of those. That's really nice because iridium is basically the, the Cadillac of materials in the game. Diamonds? Nah, they're not that important anymore. Iridium's where it's at. Okay, so almost done here, but let's take a look at what we need to upgrade the drill. We're going to need to make that quarry, right? I'm not going to make the quarry in this episode. I'm just going to make the diamond drill, just so that's clear. So three diamonds, or diamond dust, too. You could use that, and there are some ways to get that that are cheaper. And then an advanced circuit. That's not too bad at all. I went ahead and made the plates for it. The titanium plates, no big deal. Just put them in a plate bender. 
and then you're good to go. So we just need the circuit, and I already have an advanced circuit, which is kind of nice, and some diamonds. Wait, did I do that right? There we go. Diamond drill. Cool. Okay, so that is one of the things we're going to need for the quarry. And basically, we have that. We have our storage system. Everything we have set up now does allow us to quarry. So we can do that. And I think I'll do that next episode. But let's play around with this thing really quick. So it's a tool. You can't enchant it unless you use books to enchant it, just like this. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, let me charge this thing up really quick. Should charge super fast. <laughs> there we go. And again, this will use all the power from my flying tuxedo, which is pretty neat. And then this thing is just so cool. Let's find something I can rip apart. Actually, you know what? It works on both, like, dirt kind of objects. Basically anything that a shovel or a, um, a whatchamacallit, a pickaxe. What is the matter with me? Anything that would work well with that, the drill works well for. And you could make just the normal drill, but it's a bit slower. But you can slap efficiency on this. You can slap fortune on it. I guess you could slap silk touch on it. A silky drill, that seems kind of weird. There's actually something else you can make. It's called a rock cutter. And this thing takes two titanium plates, some diamond dust specifically, and then some other kind of stuff. Which actually, you know what? We might as well make this. We got a little bit of time. We've pretty much accomplished what we needed to in this episode. I don't feel like starting up the quarry, and I don't feel like doing the ME upgrades, even though I really want to. Ugh. So sick of these project tables, right? Um, <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead. Actually, there's one other thing, isn't there? It's um, rock cutter. Oh, a chainsaw, of course. Take a look at this. It's a chainsaw. So more steel plates in the circuit, and you can make an advanced one with overclockers and a diamond. So that's pretty cool. Let's uh, Actually, let's go ahead and make some of that stuff. Get rid of all this. So... The rock cutter has silk touch in it basically automatically, which is really nice, really handy. It's a little slow, though, but you can put efficiency on it with a book. So that's kind of handy. What am I doing in here? All right, let's do that. Um, well, let's start with this chainsaw since it's right here. So five steel plates. Oh, I'm going to need two batteries, aren't I? Eh, no problem. Okay. Oh, hold on to that. Yeah, you know what? Well, no, what am I talking about? It's just going to take half a second to make this. Hang tight for just a moment. All right, two batteries. That should be all we need. And then that and the circuits. Actually, I don't remember the order. And then some steel plates, huh? Is that it? Yay, we got a chainsaw, guys. How cool is that? Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty cool. And we can upgrade it, but I'm going to need to make those overclocker upgrades first. So instead, let's go ahead and make that rock cutter thingy. And uh, yeah, so two titanium plates, electronic circuit, and a battery and some diamond dust. No problem. Guess we don't need these steel plates, huh? So let's take three diamonds to macerate. And we're going to need to make some more titanium plates, but that's no problem. We got, oh yeah, we got it right here. So nice. What else are we going to need to make in this blast furnace? We're going to need to make some silicon, of course. And, um, let's see. We're going to need to make some aluminium in order to up... Actually, we can't make aluminium. We don't have enough heat capacity. We have to upgrade first. And I think the way to do that, there is a way to do it, obviously. Maybe we have to put the coils in first. Well, that wouldn't make any sense. Titanium. Yeah, let me just take a look here. Let's get this all upgraded. So we need heating coils. Nichrome. Well, it takes nickel and chrome. We don't have the stuff to make chrome yet. So maybe we just have to put these 
copper nickel ones in here. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna just uh, take a look just half a second. I will be right back. Okay, so I figured out what the problem was, and this actually is uh, something that I didn't do in my single player world. You see, I didn't make the original blast furnace in the single player world, so it was the steel plates that were a problem to get. Anyway, I'll show you the workaround in a second, but I got everything put together for the rock cutter. So let's go ahead and make that. Ta-da! We got everything we need. We got our new electric tools. I like that. That is pretty cool. Um, okay, so then over in this crafting monitor, I have the solution. You need these reinforced machine casings. You need, um, I think it's four of these in addition to the standard machine casings in order to increase the temperature enough to make chrome, to make uh, aluminum, to make stuff like that. So you need steel plates. If you didn't make an actual, like a standard blast furnace, then you need to make the, uh, just the standard machine casings first because you won't have access to the steel plates unless you use the plate bending machine after smelting steel, of course, or like steel equipment you find. That's a way to get around it. But as a general rule, you're going to need these steel plates from the blast furnace or from the industrial blast furnace using the standard machine casing. So let's just go ahead and make four of these. Unfortunately, they're rather expensive, but I think four will do the trick. I hope four will do the trick. Okay, so we I think we can put these anywhere, but we just have to be careful for that lava. So mm, let's put them up top in a plus sign. That'll It'll look kind of nice. Whoa. Wild. Alright. Now, it's not going to work until we put these here. Okay, let's see. Does that do the trick? Yes, it does. But it looks like we're going to need even more. So, I think we actually might need nine, come to think of it. Because it was a 1520 before. So that means each of those added an effective 20, um, 20 degrees over the last. So, yeah. All right, you know what? I'm going to go make some more really quick. I will be right back. Okay, went ahead and got the reinforced machine casing, the rest of it built. So that's cool. Uh, now we just got to get rid of that lava. So hopefully I don't burn here. Oh, I'm burning. Oh, well. <laughs> No big deal. You know what? I'm going to put this lava away for just half a moment. That way I can just, I don't know, figure out what else to do. Let's just do this. I don't think, I don't know, hopefully eight will be enough. Hey, let's not trap myself in now. That wouldn't be very good. That looks kind of interesting. Um, okay, so, lava time. Wait, is that too, no, it's not too deep. Okay, we're cool. We're cool. Oh, yeah, that was actually even too much, but that's fine. I mean, I would have been a little bit short had I not have made the one, because you have to make it in multiples of four. So, eh, you know what, whatever. Looks pretty cool. So now we're at 1760K. Meaning we can make, um, what can we make? We can make aluminum. We can make chrome, which is very handy. Um, can't quite make tungsten. Can't quite make the super hot tungsten stuff. That's fine. You don't need that for right away. Really, it's just the aluminum and the chrome you might be needing. So, cool. We went ahead and did that. And you know what? I went ahead and did one more thing as well. I made the, uh, well, I got everything into place to make the advanced chainsaw. Yeah! There we go. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and charge these tools really quick. Since I, oh, well, you know what? Let me put that over here. Since I happen to have a few different charging outlets. Okay, well, that's pretty cool. And, man, what else do I want to use for this electrolyzer? Huh, methane to get carbon and hydrogen. Clay, I'm kind of liking that clay thing. First of all, can I use that cheaty book on the clay? That'd be cool. Um, let's see, clay. How do I get this? Does not look like it. That's a shame.
Okay, we can use this industrial centrifuge thing. Kind of to get it. Not too shabby. Oh, wow. I can use a lot of water buckets and red cobblestone to get it. Well, yeah, no super easy way to get clay, but that's still fine. Um, all right. So what else am I going to do? I have all the tools I need. This thing's just going to town. I feel like I should put something else in there to electrolyze. So let's just put a stack of sand in and hope for the best. Get some silicon. Oh, have it in the wrong order. There we go. There we go. Now we're good. Now we're good. Okay, cool. So let's see. Um, oh, I know one thing we can make. Let's make something called a gravit. Oops, a gravit tool. And you notice how I have this electric tree tap and the electric wrench and all that stuff. Well, in the Gravisweet mod, I'm pretty sure it's Gravisweet, there's this Gravit tool, which takes an electric tree tap, an electric hoe, an electric wrench, two advanced alloys, two carbon plates, advanced circuit, and an energy crystal. But it makes this Gravit tool, which basically combines the functionality of all of those things. And it's just pretty useful. So that's kind of nice. I think I'll also go ahead and make, um, what is it, this Omni, Omni wrench. Since it's just some cyan wool, golding it, and two diamonds. Big deal. Do I... Yeah, I don't think I have anything to make the cyan yet. But do I have anything to make blue? What is that again? I'll be darned if I know. Oh, yeah, that's lapis. No problem. Okay, so let's just take some bone meal. Pretty sure this will work. And what is it, lapis? Yeah, that, no, light blue. What do I need to do with that, then? Oh, that's right. I need the green. Let's do that in cactus green. There we go. Cyan dye. And some wool. There we go. We have the cyan wool. And now we just need a little bit of gold. And two diamonds, right? Oh, they're right up top. There we go, prototype Omni Wrench. Now I think this actually combines a lot of the functionality of all of the different wrenches. Um, I don't think it will take down a machine, but let's try it out. Okay, so we'll use this compress. Oh wow, it does. Huh. I don't know if it's entirely lossy or lossless though. That's the only problem. Um, I would assume that it probably is, but maybe not. I think I could also use that on this. Oh, that's awesome. See, I can turn everything around. Sort of like a crescent hammer, except uh, not. Now, I think it does glitch out. Like, for some things, you have to click a certain side in order to remove it. But as a general rule, it works pretty well. I kind of like that. Handy. Very handy. Well, I'm not going to mess with this too much. I'll just kind of keep this around, but it's a fun thing to play around with. Uh, and then that other thing I needed, the gravit tool. I don't feel quite as motivated to get that anymore, but I guess it's still handy. Um, well, let me just look it up again. I'm just out of the, the whatchamacallits. Carbon plates. Do I have any coal dust? Yeah, I got a little bit of coal dust. Oops. Let's go ahead and put it together. Make some carbon fiber. I gotta grind up some more coal. Ugh. Okay, let's get this compressed. Rotary macerator. How much coal do I even have? Seems like I've got. Oh, yeah, like 2,000. I could grind that up. Ah, whatever. Let's just. Let's just do two stacks in the background. Oh, what's electrolyzing here? Oh, wow, it's done already. Okay, I guess I'll give it a little bit more sand. There we go. Get some silicon for later. Okay, rotary macerator time. Let's pop these coal in there. Hopefully that'll do the trick. All right, all right, all right. Um, yeah, so this is probably compressed enough in the system. I think I have a little bit left for advanced alloy. Yeah, a little bit. 
So I know it needed two. I just don't remember. Yeah, that. Oh, and it needs an energy crystal. You know what? You can make energy crystals with rubies, but I'm really trying to save my rubies for chrome. And besides, I have so many diamonds, it's no big deal. All right. So that and... Oh, I need to make that other thing. Darn it. The electric hoe. Big deal. Okay, so we need a circuit, which I think I still have one. Yeah, I still have one of those. And we're going to need another battery, which I don't think I have any, so we'll just have to craft one up. Oh, man, I'm really looking forward to doing the uh, molecular assembly chamber so I can do auto crafting with this. I think I'll do that after the quarry because that'll give us plenty of fun stuff to do. And then we need some tin. There we go. Got our battery. Let's make that electric hoe. Steel plates on top, and then a circuit, and then we're good. Cool. All right, and I think we just have to now combine them all together to make this. Um, where's the other thing? There's a tree tap. Advanced alloys. Carbon plates. And that energy crystal. What else did it need? Oh, an advanced circuit. Oh, do I have one? Shoot, I don't. Um, no problem. No problem. You know what? I'm just going to use the other crafting terminal really quick. Okay. I know I have, like, one circuit left. Well, okay. I guess I had six. Why do I need gold? I don't need gold. I need lapis, and I need some glowstone. There we go. There we go. Finally. Man. Okay, let's just shuffle these around. There we go. The Gravitool. Cool. Now, I think this thing has a bunch of different oops, modes. And now it's hover mode. That's not what I want. Um, whoa. Oh, that sounds awesome. <laughs> okay, so in order to do that, it's very similar to the electric wrench, where you have to hold in whatever your mode key, I think it's that, yeah, whatever your mode switch key is set to. In my case, it's comma, but hold that in and then right click, and it will change the different modes. Screwdriver, so I think this, I don't even know what the screwdriver does. Okay, well, it doesn't just that. I guess maybe it's a different type of tool. Um, and then there's the hoe tool, tree, tra tree trap tool, that's kind of funny, and the wrench tool. And I think the wrench is lossless, so it'll just get rid of it. Uses up some power, but again, it's a tool, so it will always go full, because it can use the power from my flying tuxedo. Nice! Okay, so I think we got a whole bunch of really cool stuff built. What do you say, huh? Um, I'm going to pop some silicon cells in here just to kind of get them going. And I'm, I'm looking forward to doing that quarry, aren't you? Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm so excited for that. So let's, uh, let's actually just say this has been a good episode, huh? We got the industrial blast furnace built. We got that diamond drill built, the gravit tool. We got all of our other... Wait, where is all of our other stuff? I know I had a bunch of tools on me. Where did they all go? Did I put them away or something? That's weird. Well, we got a whole bunch of stuff, so... Definitely like that. Where did they go? That's so strange. I got my drill. Chainsaw, did I... Pretty sure I... Huh. I'm really confused now. Where is my chainsaw? <laughs> Am I just totally spacing out? Wow, that's so weird. Alright, well, I'm going to have to go find that chainsaw. But am I sure I'm not seeing it? Yeah, I'm really not. It's so strange. Oh, man, where are they? Oh, jeez. Well, you know what? I'm going to have to track those things down. And uh, hopefully I can find them. I'm just not seeing them. 
Huh. Well, I'll have to rewatch the video. I'm probably just derping. I do that all the time. Anyway, I will see you in the next episode of Maryland's Hermitcraft Feed the Beast Adventure. See you next time, missing rat cutters and chainsaws, hopefully. How's it going, everyone? Marilyn here, and I'm back from Dirtville. I totally forgot that... Oh, yeah! Where did I put my tools? I put them in my MFE and MFSU. Yeah, <laughs> that's where they were hiding. All right, all right. I just had to show that before you're like, oh, man. Oh, man, I just, I'm not used to having all these charging stations. It's crazy. Anyway, now I'll see you on the next episode of Maryland's Hermitcraft Feed the Beast Adventure. See you next time. Um, the Advanced Chainsaw. Oh, yeah.